Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and today I am starting a weekend reading vlog. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, it's Friday, February 25th um, and yeah, it's around 1 p.m. So I'm kind of starting this in the middle of the afternoon. Um, I did a bunch of stuff this morning um, in prep, I guess, just to get things off my to-do list. So I did laundry, I vacuumed, I uh, wrapped up some things at work. And so, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to a afternoon um, to casually work slash read. <laughs> if anyone works from home, let me know if you uh, also kind of do that because um, yeah, if I have emails, I'll answer them, but there's really nothing on my to-do list. Um, so I'm kind of just a sitting duck. It's, it's weird because it's February and normally during February, I'm working a lot. So, um, yeah, it's, it's refreshing actually, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I thought I would talk quickly about my plans for the weekend as far as reading goes. Um, so... The first thing that I'm physically reading that I wanted to talk about is uh, I'm reading Agnes Gray by Anne Bronte. Um, I actually have yet to haul this book. I got it. Um, so I got this $200 gift card, Amazon gift card from uh, my boss. Um, she just appreciated all my hard work on a project that kind of went haywire and I kind of um, was left to pick up the pieces and she appreciated that. And so she sent me a $200 gift card, which was so sweet. And um, anyway, so with that, <laughs> I immediately wanted to buy books, of course. And so um, I ended up buying a lot of editions of books that I've been eyeing that are more expensive, but um, you know, I just felt like splurging a little bit since I had this, this cash. So one of them was this brilliant, beautiful um, edition, Every Man's Library edition of Anne Bronte's two works that she um, wrote before she tragically died young. I think she died at age 29. Um, but yeah, I, I was recommended Agnes Gray as a um, classic that has a love story in it. Um, I recently did a Tropes I Love video where I talked about um, specific tropes that I'm trying to find more of. And one of those tropes was um, classics that have a love story in it. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely seeing that. I'm actually planning on finishing this today. I have about 70 pages left in it. It's a super short book. I think it's 200 pages. So um, yeah, it's taken me like two or three days so far to read, but I plan on finishing the rest today. I've enjoyed it a lot. It's um, <laughs> basically the trials and tribulations of a governess. Um, that's the whole story. And uh, from what I know, it's anecdotal to um, Anne Bronte's own life. Um, and uh, yeah, it's pretty tragic, to be honest. Like a lot of it is very traumatic where it talks about um, the... The... Um, the horrors of trying to deal with the people who hire you, the families who hire you, as well as the children that you're in charge of as a governess, um, the children that she gets, that Agnes Gray gets, um, like as wards are <laughs> terrible. Um, I just can't believe how terrible a lot of these kids are. And I don't know if it's like, that's really how it would be or, Maybe it is because of how um, class was such a factor in those days um, and such a um, probably impact on how you thought of other people and treated other people. So maybe it really was like that. But anyways, it's also she's um, falling for this really kind um, clergyman and uh, he he's kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel for her. I like, he's, um, he's bringing her joy where she has all of this other stuff going on. So, uh, refreshing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it and plan on finishing this today. 
Um, the book that I also plan on finishing on audio today, I'm excited, I'm finishing these books, it's been great. Um, the book that I plan on finishing on audio is The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter by Hazel Gaynor. So um, I have been on a huge Hazel Gaynor kick ever since I read um, Last Christmas in Paris. I listened to it on audio, um, which is also by her and Heather Webb. Um, I've been looking to read more of Hazel Gaynor. I just loved that book so much. It was five stars and quite honestly, my favorite read of the year so far. Um, it just had everything I've ever wanted in a historical fiction book. Um, romance, World War I set, um, epic characters that will stay with me. Uh, it was just the best. <laughs> I loved that experience of reading that book, listening to it. Um, and yeah, so I decided I wanted to pick this one up after it was recommended to me as a great audiobook as well. And that is true. The narrator for this audiobook does voices excellently. Um, it's set in um, North Sumberland. Is that how you... North, Northumberland, sorry. Um, Northumberland, England. And um, there's a very distinct accent related to that that um, I think the narrator does well. Um, basically, the story of this book is uh, it's two different timelines, which is also something that Hazel Gaynor is um, known for. So um, one of them is set in 1838 and one of them is 1938. The one set in 1838 revolves around um, Grace Darling, who is the lighthouse keeper's daughter. And um, what, ends, what happens in history and what this story is based on is um, her rescue of uh, some shipwrecked, um, like, what do you call them? Victims? I don't know. I can't remember what the actual term is for that, but um, some people are shipwrecked and her and her dad go out to um, help and save them on the coast in the middle of this storm. And that really happened and it actually um, generated some huge fame and acclaim for her, for Grace. And so um, it's her dealing with all of that, <laughs> all of that fame. Um, and then also her falling in love with this artist that ends up um, painting her and um, he's a local artist and she knows him from before she became famous but then um, they rekindle kind of their romance once all this goes down and she ends up saving his sister in the midst of like his sister ends up um, being one of the sh the people who is who are who is shipwrecked I can't say that anyways um, and then the the storyline a hundred years later is um <clears throat> this this girl who ends up going from Ireland to America um basically shipped there by her parents who were ashamed of her because she um accidentally got pregnant and um so she's pregnant she's on this voyage to America and she's going to visit distant cousins um in America to have her child um because her dad is a politician and so they don't want to deal with any scandal and um, the connection between the two storylines is um, kind of a mystery at first, but you kind of understand the real, um, the real connections pretty, pretty fast. Um, she ends up going and visiting this cousin of hers who is a lighthouse keeper as well. And so um, she's very standoffish and um, their friendship is kind of hard fought at first. Um, but also beautiful in the end. So, oh, my neighbors are doing something outside. <laughs> um, anyways, so yeah, I plan on finishing this. I only have an hour left in it. Um, so yeah, it should be finished today, if not tomorrow. And uh, then I, I will let you guys know what I end up picking from my, I have like five books out <laughs> on my Libby app. So um, I have a selection to pick from that um, I'm, I'm excited to read from any of them, honestly. So we'll see which one kind of tickles my fancy. Um, but yeah, I'll let you guys know once I get there. Uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the first clip of this vlog. Of course, it's already 10 minutes long. <laughs> um, but as far as my weekend plans go, um, kind of up in the air at this point, uh, I might end up going to Ikea to get some things for our nursery. Um, I've been, I've been buying a lot of 
furniture and cute items for it. Um, nesting, as you would say. <laughs> um, so I might end up doing that or I might end up just staying home and just chilling at home. Um, it's been cold here, actually, for Phoenix. It's been in the 50s. So um, anyways, it's, it's kind of like wrap up weather for me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where the weekend takes me. Um, I'm excited and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this vlog. So I've been recently obsessed with this salad place. It's called Salad and Go. It's a drive through salad place where it's $5.74 for a hefty salad, as you can tell. <laughs> um, and what I do is I just add some rice to it to make it even more substantial. And um, yeah, it's been a consistent choice for me for lunch for a good month or so. <laughs> um, I get it quite often. Um, and I actually got two because I know I'm going to want one this weekend again. And it'll just stay fresh in my fridge. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been healthy and I've been feeling really good about it. So yeah, just a random little um, lunch moment here showing what I'm eating <laughs> um but I'm also reading so I'm that's my little area there I'm just reading my book as I as I snack and finish my lunch so it'll be great so um I had to pause eating my lunch to share with you guys this line I read in my my book so I'm reading Agnes Gray um <laughs> total total pride and prejudice moment um hand clutch moment right now so uh, let me just read it. It says, I could, not I could not deny the truth of his assertion and so went with him to the carriage. He even offered his hand on getting in, an unnecessary piece of civility, but I accepted that too for fear of giving offense. One glance he gave, one little smile at parting. It was but for a moment, but therein I read, or thought I read, a meaning that kindled in my heart a brighter flame of hope than had ever yet arisen. <laughs> Yes, isn't that the exact like description of what happens in the, um, the Kiera Knightley Pride and Prejudice? I'm enjoying that. And then um, I kept reading and uh, she's talking about how um, she is reflecting more on her um, looks than she ever has. And she's like caring more about how she looks than she ever has. And um, she she's talking about how um you're taught at, in childhood that looks shouldn't matter that it should be all about um who you are inside um but uh this is this is what i wanted to read and like it's so true so it says we are naturally disposed to love what gives us pleasure and what more pleasing than a beautiful face when we know no harm of the possessor at least a little girl loves her bird. Why? Because it lives and feels, because it is helpless and harmless. A toad likewise lives and feels and is equally equally helpless and harmless. But though she would not hurt a toad, she could not love it like the bird, with its graceful form, soft feathers, and bright speaking eyes. If a woman is fair and amiable, she is praised for both qualities, but especially the former, by the bulk of mankind. If, on the other hand, she is disagreeable in person and character, her plainness is commonly inveighed against as her greatest crime, because to common observers, it gives the greatest offense. While if she is plain and good, provided she is a person of retired manners and secluded life, no one ever knows of her goodness, except her immediate connections. Others, on the contrary, are disposed to form unfavorable opinions of her mind and disposition if it be but to excuse themselves for their instinctive dislike of one so unfavored by nature. And vice versa, with her whose angel form conceals a vicious heart or sheds a false deceitful charm over defects and foibles that would not be tolerated in another. <laughs> Isn't that so true that um, often we as humankind are inclined to think the best of people who um, are deemed beautiful, like, um, and how there's that basically, um, paradox happening with, um, 
our perception of people based on how they look and it's sad like I I, I hate that um but it is a very true like I think that reflection on human nature is so prevalent even now <laughs> um and anyways I read that and I was like yeah that's still just so true that that that's what happens um that we care more about beauty than we do about um I mean sadly that we do, than we do about people's acts or um their character anyways um <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm excited to keep reading on this. I have 50 pages left, so that's my plan for the rest of the afternoon is to, is to finish this book. I'm really enjoying it, if you can't tell. <laughs> As you guys probably saw in my little clip, um, I just got back from taking the dogs on a walk as well as getting some mail. And of course there was book mail. <laughs> so um, yeah, I thought I would open these on camera. Um, they're both Etsy purchases of bookmarks. Um, I've just been on kind of a bookmark buying binge, I guess you could say, um, of fandoms that I love is what I've been hunting for. So um, we'll open this one first. This is from a Etsy store called Alicia Marks It. And um, I just saw the cutest bookmark ever from it and had to have it. So let's just open her up. Oh, this is cute. I love the packaging. Um, here we go. Yes, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. So um, <laughs> it's a You've Got Mail bookmark. Um, You've Got Mail is my absolute favorite movie of all time. Literally number one for me. And um, this one is super, super nice. I love it. It's um, like really thick um, laminate and it says, I go online and my breath catches in my chest until I hear three little words. You've got mail. <laughs> and it's got them kissing with Brinkley. Oh my gosh. So this is like taken from the garden scene at the very end. Oh, but this actual like line here is from the very beginning of the movie. But um, anyways, I just love it. I'll link her shop down below. You can check out what else she's got. Um, I know she has a lot of other fandoms and stuff on there or just like general um, designs. So Anyways, this is probably my new favorite bookmark. I love it. <laughs> okay, but then um, I also ordered a bookmark from um, very, very far away, Australia. So this is coming all the way from Australia. Um, and it's a Etsy store called Jamie H. Crafts. And I'll also leave her link down below. So um, she sent me a replacement for a bookmark that I thought I hadn't received, but I actually did end up getting it. So this is like my second uh, like version of it. So I feel bad <laughs> that she sent me another one when I got the, uh, the first one, but I, I did message her saying I hadn't seen it in the mail yet and it had been like a month. Um, so it got lost in the mail. But anyways, I'll just have a duplicate and it's totally fine. <laughs> but let me show you guys the bookmark. So, um, yeah, so she said, hey, Melissa, thanks for supporting my small business. Happy reading, Jamie. Cute. Um, so here we go. So this is uh, actually, it's fun that I'm showing this now because I talked about in my last video how much I love Fleabag, another, like, my favorite TV show. You've Got Mail is my favorite movie. But my favorite TV show is Fleabag. I love it so much. You guys have to check it out <laughs> if you haven't yet. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. It's a comedy. It's kind of like a, a sad comedy, I would say. Like there's some really grief-stricken sad moments in it, but um, 
In the second season, there's a romance between her and a hot priest. <laughs> and that's what this is. So this is, um, quoting it, there's this scene where he says, Neil. And if you guys know the scene, you know the scene. <laughs> but yeah, so this says, Neil. And then it says the priest from Fleabag. So, um, and then it's like a picture of him. Kind of a darker toned picture, if I'm gonna be honest, than, I mean, the guy's white. So this is kind of weird that it's this dark to me. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, so this is the other bookmark I got. Um, just on plain cardstock. Uh, I wish it was laminated, to be honest with you guys. Um, the other, this bookmark is way like higher quality to me than this one is. Um, so just, just for a unbiased review, I guess. Um, so yeah, <laughs> those are the two bookmarks I got in the mail today. Um, this was a very busy day, a lot of clips filmed, um, but I do plan on reading the rest of the night and then um, filming and vlogging this weekend. So we'll see how long this vlog goes for. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> you are so cute. Yeah. Yeah, you're so cute. Yeah. No, you're so cute. You are too, Lily. You're just elegant. You just keep... Keep level-headed while Butter <laughs> is the excitable one. <laughs> huh. Yeah. I found somebody I say you don't cross my mind Good morning everyone um, It's Saturday morning It's actually around 11 <clears throat> But I've been up since 5.30 <laughs> um, Yeah, insomnia is real <laughs> for me um, But yeah, I, I mean It's been good because I've had a lot of time to read and um, get some household chores done. Um, this is my awesome mug that my husband gifted me for Christmas. It says libraries and Labradors on it. It's my favorite mug for, for tea to keep it warm. Oh, and I'm enjoying a red velvet cake flavored tea from David's Tea. So good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did end up finishing my two books that I thought, um, that I planned on finishing that I was talking about. So I wanted to quickly kind of share my reviews of them. So the first book that I finished on audio was The Lighthouse Keeper's Daughter by Hazel Gaynor. Um, <clears throat> I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I really enjoyed one storyline more than the other. So it was a dual timeline, um, and I enjoyed Grace's storyline that's set in 1838 um, at the lighthouse. It's, she is the character that <laughs> involves the title. Um, and her romance with George Emerson was so sweet and so um, tender. And I loved that aspect of the story. But then the uh, other aspect that's set in um, 1938 with her, with, uh, a girl named Matilda who ends up coming to America and she's pregnant um, and not married and um, she ends up being sent to a distant cousins to basically have her baby and then give it away. Um, <coughs> that story was not as good for me. I just didn't enjoy listening as much to that one. And um, I really enjoyed Hazel Gaynor's writing still. That was a highlight for sure. But um, one thing I wanted to mention that is kind of something that bugged me a little bit about this book was there was this big theme of motherhood in it, which um, I love themes of motherhood. Um, however, it was very centered on... Um, a mother's connection to her biological children. Basically what I'm trying to say is there seems to be some sort of like theme of how um, a mother's love for her her biological children that she she births is um, 
more important, not important, but like more prevalent than one who raises one, which I don't believe at all. Personally, um, I'm adopted myself. And the idea that my connection with my birth mother could mean more to me than my connection with my mom. No. <laughs> um, I, I love my mom so, so, so much. And the fact that she raised me for 18 years, um, it definitely outweighs the fact that my birth mother birthed me. Um, and that didn't feel like the case in this book. That's what I'll say. <laughs> um, anyways, without giving away spoilers and stuff, that's, that's kind of what I'll say. So anyways, a weird theme of motherhood that kind of just like irked me a little bit in here, but, um, but yeah, I still enjoyed it. Still ended up giving it three and a half stars. It was good. Um, and I'm glad I read it and finally can have this book checked off my list. <laughs> um, then the book that I ended up finishing this morning early around 6 a.m. was Agnes Gray by Anne Bronte. Oh my goodness. It was so good. Yeah, this was so good, you guys. Um, I really loved it. I loved the writing in here. Anne Bronte is so masterful. I can't believe she wrote this in her 20s. Um, I loved the story. It was very simple but uh, very well executed, like I said in my Goodreads review. Um, and I loved the romance between Agnes and Mr. Weston. That was top tier. There were so many cinematic moments of like hand clutches and like um, eyes across, meeting across the room and like him helping her um, through a thunderstorm with, her, with his umbrella, like stuff like that was, in here and it was so good <laughs> i just love that part um but the main story is the story of how she deals with being a governess to horrible children basically and um how she kind of grows to realize like that um it's not all it's cracked up to be i guess and um yeah i i enjoyed that part too obviously but yeah, there was something about the romance that really got me <laughs> with this book. Um, but because it was just 200 pages, didn't feel, um, it didn't feel substantial enough for me to give it more than a uh, four stars. So that's what I settled on was four stars. But this is definitely a classic. I would recommend if you're interested in classics but are a little wary of them. Um, it was very, very readable, super easy, um, like, uh, prose. Um, so yeah, I would recommend this book. I can't wait to pick up The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I know that that one is more substantial <clears throat> and um, I think more praised of her two works. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited about picking that one up at some point. Um, so and yeah, it's a lot longer too. So this is where the bookmark ends for the first book and then the rest of this book is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. So um, yeah, anyways, I loved reading from this edition too. It was so nice. Just, just an amazing experience. <laughs> so <clears throat> yeah, those are my two, um, books that I've read so far this weekend. Um, and now I'm here kind of trying to decide what to read next. Um, there's two books so far that I've given a shot that I've liked. I'm not ready to commit yet though. I have, um, I have, I'm just dealing with commitment issues right now <laughs> with books. Like, I'll be like, oh, this book sounds good. I'll read the first chapter or two and then be like, but is this the book I want to read? <laughs> so anyways, I'll, I'll share the two that I've read so far. Um, I read the first chapter in Love and War by Patricia Hagen because I, I am kind of in the mood for a Civil War book. Um, as you guys know, it's one of my favorite subgenres is like Civil War historical fiction or Civil War historical romances. And um, this one is a historical romance, if you can't tell from the cover. Um, but it's very long. It's actually a really thick historical. Um, it's like over 500 pages and the, the font is no joke. Um, so this is a story, like this is gonna be epic. Um, 
I read the first chapter and actually really loved it. I loved the character of Kitty, the main um, heroine in the story. She was so feisty and very feminist. And I loved that part. Um, but this is going to be very uh, bodice rippery. Like it's, it's old school. So I'm not sure if I'm quite in the mood for that yet. I don't know. I want to give it another chapter. See if I can keep going with it and see if I keep enjoying it. So yeah, so there's this one. The other one that I picked up that I read um, actually a pretty good amount in, 50 pages to be exact, um, is Blackmore by Julian Donaldson. Julianne Donaldson. Um, I hauled this as part of my Christmas haul forever ago. And uh, a ton of you guys said you love this book. And um, it, co it comes highly recommended to me. Uh, this is a uh, Regency romance. It's clean. Um, but I know it's a super slow burn friends to lovers situation. And that has definitely been the case so far in this book. Um, she's basically best friends with this guy named Henry who owns this estate or who is an heir to this Blackmore estate. Um, that's on this, the Moors and is kind of gothic-y. And she's always wanted to go there, but has been, um, prevented from going for a variety of reasons. And, uh, anyways, she grows up being friends with him and hearing all these stories about Blackmore and wanting to go there. And then finally, she's allowed to go there by her mother, um, with the condition being, because she keeps, um, saying marriage is not for her, the condition is that she can go to Blackmore and experience this, like, high society life if, um, she can secure three proposals and reject three proposals, possibly. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a weird deal, to be honest with you. Um, but I think, like, her mom is just desperate for her to get, um, get married. And so, uh, I know that the plot is probably going to be that Henry ends up being the, one of those proposals and she's torn because um, in order to go to India, which is her main dream, she has to not be married. And so uh, anyways, that's kind of the plot and I'm enjoying it, but <laughs> again, I can't commit. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, so maybe I'll just keep reading in it and it'll be like a casual read for me. It's very short. I mean, it's less than 300 pages, so it really wouldn't take me that long to read it. Um, and I'm using my cute, uh, you've got me on bookmark with it. But anyways, these are the two books that I have going, but who knows what will actually happen. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Um, and I will just check in with you guys in another clip. <laughs> So it's Saturday afternoon around two. Um, I just woke up from a nap actually, <laughs> um, <clears throat> which was needed. So I'm so glad I did that. Um, but yeah, I'm back to reading and I read outside for a little bit to get some sun, but it actually is pretty warm out there. So I got kind of hot. <laughs> so I came back inside. Um, but yeah, I am continuing to read Love and War by Patricia Hagen. Um, something about this, guys, is just capturing me. Um, it's giving me all the Gone with the Wind, Civil War, um, romantic vibes. Uh, it's actually very, um, it's starting out very character oriented, um, with, discussing Kitty, who is, um, she lives in North Carolina. Um, her family used to own slaves, but they freed all their slaves. And, um, her dad is anti-slavery now and, um, they care for their own farm and they're extremely poor, um, because of that. And <clears throat> so they're also criticized heavily as being um, Northern symp sympathizers, um, Federalist, or yeah, Federal sympathizers. And um, this is pre the war. So this is right before the war. 
um, ends up happening. I think Lincoln just got elected. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of tension in the air as far as that goes um, with her family versus the town. Um, and then as well, she has her eyes set on a um, handsome man who is actually a plantation owner. And um, her dad struggles with her wanting to court this man because of his views. And, uh, and she as well, she doesn't like that he owns slaves and that um, he believes in slavery and all of that. But uh, she can't help but have some lustful feelings for him. I don't think he's the main hero. I mean, I know he's not the main hero because it's actually, um, it says she was all things to two men. And so I think it's um, this guy who will be end up being on the Confederate side and then also um, a Yankee soldier who she'll actually fall in love with is what I'm guessing the plot is. <laughs> um, but it is... It's just a really good setup so far. Like this is not, um, it's giving me family saga vibes more than anything, more than it being historical romance or um, just a general romance. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, I'm kind of into it. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm going to be um, just uh, continuing to read this today. Um, I'm waiting for my husband to get home from work. He sometimes has to work Saturdays. Well, usually he has to work Saturdays, but he gets home usually around three. And then um, we'll go on a WALK with the dogs. Um, we're still doing the 75 hard thing. <laughs> so we still have to do two workouts a day, one being outside. Um, so I did my first workout of the day. I just did a yoga class, actually a prenatal yoga class. Um, it was quite nice, but, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for him to get home so we can take the dogs. Um, I'm also playing around with the idea of starting, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh. You guys think probably that I just have like no, um, ability to stick to one book, but it's true. Um, I'm, I'm playing, Ooh. The uh, my husband might have just got home actually. <laughs> Okay, that was not my husband. That was the Amazon delivery guy, <laughs> of course. Um, but I was going to say that I'm also playing around with the idea of starting Daniel Deronda. Um, this was on my most recent um, top, like, 10 books I need to get to in 2022 video. Um, it's, I think, going to be my mammoth for March, um, March of the Mammoths. Um, it's over 800 pages. And uh, I'm just really intrigued by this story. So um, I love this author, as you guys know. So um, this might be my next classic that I pick up. And I've been in a classic binge recently. Um, and so this might also end up being something I pick up today. We'll see. I'm actually really enjoying my time with Love and War, though. So I'm kind of like just going to ride that wave <laughs> for as long as possible. Um but yeah, I'll, I want to show you guys how pretty it is outside. Um, it is just a gorgeous day today. So uh, I'll just share a little clip of that. So here it is outside. Don't, my, don't mind my um, swollen feet. <laughs> Anyways, they're enjoying some sun. <laughs> but yeah, um, this is how pretty it is outside. It is just a gorgeous day today. Um, I honestly, the highlight of this house for me is this wall-to-wall -wall, um, window that we have here that's just absolutely breathtaking to be able to see this kind of view um, from inside my house and then also open it up when it re is really, really nice outside. Um, I'm not doing that today because it's still like 65 degrees, so it'd be kind of chilly. Um, but anyways, I just thought I'd share a nice, a nice view of our, our backyard. So, um, I'm actually in the car. <laughs> um, random story. Uh, my husband's obsessed with Pokemon Go and there's this big event happening today. 
Um, I forgot what it's called, but, uh, anyways, so we're at the park. He's doing a bunch of Pokemon stuff and, um, I'm in the car <laughs> chilling with my books. I literally brought like physical books with me, um, to read with me. So, um, that's the plan. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, so I wanted to mention the audiobook I started today because I didn't get a chance to talk about that yet. Um, so the audiobook that I'm listening to is The Diplomat's Wife by Pam Jenoff. Um, this is the second book in a series, um, like a duology. So the first book is The Commandant's Girl, which is actually one of my favorite books, um, historical fiction books ever. I loved it. Um, and so this is a continuation of that story, um, following a Jewish girl named Marta or Martha, one of the two. And, um, she gets, it's like post World War II ending. So it's just right after that. And she gets rescued from a concentration camp by, um, a couple of American soldiers and she's recovering right now. And, um, she kind of was, uh, she really liked one of the soldiers that rescued her, I think. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, um, I've just barely started it. I think I'm 30 minutes in. It's like a 12 hour audiobook. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing as far as audiobooks go. Um, but really what I'm doing is reading more of Love and War. Um, I'm so, so enjoying my time with this. I can't figure out how to like angle this, but yeah, I'm so enjoying my time with this. It's, it's been really good so far. Um, but also if I feel so inclined, I did bring <laughs> Daniel Deronda with me. So, um, if I feel like reading that instead, I will, but so far so good with Love and War. So, um, I'm going to continue with that. So as you guys may know, if you follow me on Instagram, I am a bath fiend. <laughs> I love taking baths. Um, it's one of my favorite pastimes. I literally probably take five baths a week. Um, and anyways, I thought I'd show you my ingredients to the best bath ever, which is of course a book, um, water. <laughs> I get really hot, so I drink a lot of cold water. Um, this is amazing. Um, it's a towel warmer. So my husband got it for me for um, Valentine's Day. So it's a recent acquisition of mine to my bath experience. And yeah, so you just put um, you just put the, the towel in here. It's so bougie, guys. <laughs> I think it's like, you know, it's kind of extreme, but it's awesome. Um, so yeah, you put the towel in there and then you just let it sit for six minutes and then it, it'll be warm once you get out of the bath, um, which is such a thoughtful present from him, to be honest. And then, uh, yeah, and then the two things I love putting in my bath are, um, this is my favorite bubble bath. So this is from Philosophy and it's vanilla birthday cake, which I love anything sweet, so scented. So yeah, this is my favorite. And then I actually recently got this in Hawaii and I've been adding this to my baths and it is a bath salt blend, um, sweet pineapple. And it smells like pineapple. Um, it's been amazing <laughs> to be honest. Um, I've been loving it. So yeah, I've been putting this in there too. And yeah, it's gonna be a glorious bath time tonight and I'm excited. guys <laughs> it's um actually tuesday and i realized i never actually closed this vlog out um i just got back from work and changed um to go out and get tan <laughs> um no just to really enjoy some sun it's a really nice day today and so um i'm gonna try to read in the sun it's gonna be awesome but Anyways, I wanted to wrap up my my reading. Um, 
I know that, yeah, I kind of just left at a weird spot, but uh, things kind of went haywire <laughs> after that. So um, what ended up happening was uh, I kept reading Love and War by Patricia Hagen, this book right here. I kept reading this and I got 200 pages in and I was loving it up to like page 150. And then <laughs> she meets the hero, the main, the main man of the story, Travis Coltrane. And um, he's awful. He's a terrible person. Like I literally, I couldn't stand him. And um, he, he was just doing so many things that I hated. And I was like, okay, am I just going to be hating this hero the whole time I'm reading this big book? And it just kept getting worse and worse. And although the historical part of it was so great because it is Civil War set and there was so many um, history elements to do with that that was really capturing my attention, um, the romance was just not there for me. So yeah, I, I had to DNF it. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, anyways, it's, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> um, but, but because of that, I ended up picking up, um, Daniel Deronda, like I said, I might. And, um, now I'm actually 50 pages in and I'm loving it so far. Um, so I'm just going to continue with this. This is going to be my March of the Mammoths read and, um, I'm hoping it continues to be great. And that's kind of where, where I'm at <laughs> as far as reading goes. Uh, so yeah, kind of a whirlwind uh, weekend. But I did end up finishing two books, as you guys know. Um, and starting, starting this one and starting um, The Ambassador's Wife by... Or not The Ambassador's Wife. The, the Diplomat's Wife by, um, by Pam Jenoff. So... Uh, those, those, these two books are going really well. So anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Sorry, it was kind of crazy at the end, but, um, please let me know <laughs> if you did in the comments below. And if you would like, please like and comment, like I said, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye. <laughs>